Hi guys, it's Tony. Today we are going to create these huge animated info cards in Framer without any code. Let's start by inspecting our card a bit. So basically it consists of two different sections, top and bottom. And in the top section, as you can see, we have our animated hue section. And in the bottom section, we have a place for our content. So basically we have a copy section and then a button at the bottom. Well, let's start by creating a bottom section for our card. So let's start by creating a header and the copy section below the header. Now we can just duplicate the header and use a bit smaller font size for the copy in the card. Also, let's change the color a bit so there's a bit stronger hierarchy between the header and the copy. Now we can actually just copy paste the actual copy we want to use in here from our designs. After that, we want to create a stack out of the items we just created. Make sure you change the width and height to be fit content and also align text to the left hand side and remove the fill. Now when we try to resize the frame, we can notice that the texts are not actually responsive yet. So make sure that the width will be fill for both of the header and the copy. This will make sure that the text will stay wrapped inside the stack and it doesn't overflow. Now, as we can see, the bottom section also consists of the CDA button at the bottom of the screen saying learn more. So let's start creating that. So first of all, let's add a new text saying learn more. And then we can navigate into the heroicons.com and search for the chevron. And let's just copy paste the SVG file from the page into the framer. And then again, let's create a new stack out of the two items. And let's make sure that the width and height is set to be fit content. And let's remove the fill. Also, we have this divider line above the learn more element. So let's just create a new frame and create the divider out of it. And then let's select the button and the divider and let's create a new stack. And again for the stack, let's make sure that width and height is fit content and let's again remove the fill. Also, we want to increase a gap between the divider and the learn more a bit, so let's pump it up a bit. We can call the new learn more section as a button. And now if we take a look at the elements we have, we can see that we basically have the bottom section already created. So now what we can do is select all of it and create a new stack out of them. Again, let's make sure that the stack is set to be fit content, but this time we can actually add a fill. And after that, let's give a card a bit of padding. And now you can see we basically have a simple card ready made here. Let's also give it a bit of radius so we can round those corners. Then we want to ensure if we scale the card, the text will stay at the top and the learn more button will stay at the bottom. So let's change the height to be fixed and let's scale our card a bit and we can see that it actually everything is centered aligned. So what we want to do is to go to the layout menu and change the distribution to be space between. This way the text will stay at the top and the button will stay at the bottom. And now we have more room for like more text and so on here. So now we have the bottom section of our card finished and we can call this content. Then we want to create the top section, which includes basically the hue animation. So let's start by adding a new frame. And we can call this frame top section and let's select both the content and the top section and create a stack. 
Then let's resize the top section and let's set the width to be 100% and relative and let's set height to be fixed. This way we can scale our top section but the width will always stay full size of the card. Now we can actually go back to our bottom section, the content section and remove the fill out of it since we don't need it anymore. And let's give a bit of radius for this whole card. Now we need to add a new frame inside the top section. This way we can create the blur effect between the text and the image. So add a frame and give it a gradient feel in a way that the bottom of the gradient is the same color as your base of the card. And now as you can see it has this nice beautiful blur effect and we can call this layer a blur. Make sure that you set the blur to be 100% width and height so this way it will always scale up no matter what the size of the card will be. Now when we scale the card we can see that the top section actually scales pretty nicely but the text isn't responsive yet so let's make sure that the, all of the text layers are set to be width to be fill this way it always scales the size as it can scale. And now we can see that it's nicely responsive now. So now we have our whole card pretty much ready, but the only thing we are missing is the actual nice U animation at the top. So that's what we are going to do next. To achieve the effect that we want, we will go to the shadergradient.co where we can get this amazing component that you can use in Framer or in Figma or in code. Here you can see some nice examples of what kind of effects you can achieve with it. And if we take a closer look at the website, we can actually see some familiar names and faces in here. And also some self-promotion. If you want to follow me on Twitter, feel free to do it. But what we actually want to do is to go to this Framer section here and just press from the copy component and then we can paste it to our Framer site. So let's just paste it inside the top section frame that we have created earlier and set the width and height to be 100% and move the component behind the blur layer. And it seems like in the previous phase we forgot to set the blur layers other side to be transparent so let's do it now and when we do that we should have pretty much ready to go card in our hand. And now I will show you briefly how to edit the shader gradient to achieve the effects that you want to achieve. So let's select the component and as you can see there's four different type of settings. So shape, colors, effects and view. Let's start with shape. This will affect the actual shape that you can see. Let's change it to water and let's slow the speed down a bit to achieve our effect that we have in our example. And then in the color settings, you can obviously change the color of the animation. So let's make a few changes here. Then let's go to the effects. And here, the biggest change we have to do is to turn the grain off. This way we can have, instead of this grain image, we can have this smooth moving image in our card. And the last settings are for the view, so this will basically change the camera settings for your animation. You can always play with these settings as much as you want to find the optimal animation you want to do. If we increase the distance a bit, we can actually see how the whole animation is created. So it's basically this big map of blobs, so you can basically zoom in or zoom out of it, and this will create a cool animation for us. Let's change the name of this whole thing to be a card, since that's our card. And as a small final step, let's add a shadow to it.
This way we can ensure that it actually stands out from the background if the background matches the color that our card is. Here you can see the difference that the shadow and without the shadow makes for it. And that was it. That's our card. You can basically edit this and modify it based on your needs. And I also created a separate video if you want to learn how to do a responsive version of this card section. You can find the video linked here or from my channel. And as always, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. See you later.